Ah, such a nice tease there at the end. Well, not really a nice tease, but it's still a tease. It's a tease, and it doesn't go as far as the manga. They stopped at the sound of a bell. We got further than that in this particular chapter in the manga. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episode 39. Hey, there's a lot of numbering going on. I really looked at the um, names on there, and it's like, Episode 39, Part 38 of Part 12. Because <laughs> it like really has all those numbers, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yes, because we got out of sequence on the episode numbers matching the chapter numbers. Because we had an extremely long chapter at the beginning of this arc. So these episodes have been the infinity ones. So Act 36 was Infinity 10, Act 37 was Infinity 11, and Act 38, i.e. this episode, was Infinity 12. Well, that's a nice way to wrap up this arc with Sailor Saturn sacrificing her life again and then coming back again <laughs> what is this dragon ball <laughs> at least she came back as an infant the timing of pluto's death she would have had to come back as an adult in order to be reborn because she didn't die until after chibi moon came back to the past so there wasn't enough time for pluto to grow up naturally to be the age she is now Unless it's a time travel thing. Yes, and considering she is the guardian of time, it's possible. Mm -hmm. And of course we get the whole classic Chippy Moon shouting, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, and finally Sailor Moon goes, Oh, yeah, I should be doing something, right? Oh yeah, saving the world. Gotcha. <laughs> also costume upgrades. Yes. And also people repeatedly going, this is the end. This is the end. This is the end. Oh, this is the end. Um, so when is it going to end already? This is kind of like those death scenes where like, I'm dying. I need to tell you something important four hours later. Are you sure you're dying? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, okay, if Sailor Saturn swinging the Silence Glaive down is going to end the world, and the Outer Scouts were willing to kill Hataru to keep Sailor Saturn from awakening, why does nobody want to take a shot at Sailor Saturn? Also, why does her swinging it down do absolutely nothing other than tick off the big baddie? and like cast some swirling rend that's about it of course it's a long process because it seemed like in the flashback it was kind of an instant thing she swings it down everything dies <laughs> well when she showed up in the flashback we kind of already lost and the world was over and everyone was dead i don't think there was a big baddie left for sailor saturn to kill at the end of the silver millennium also she spat out that wonderful thing like oh yeah I, i'm the guy i'm the guy to death and the ending is always the beginning of something, basically, and Silly Moon, you're the hope for this world, so save it. Yeah, here's a magical MacGuffin. Have fun! Well, Sailor Moon used the magical MacGuffin, which means that Sailor Saturn didn't actually have to end the world, because Sailor Moon got to save it, so... Yeah, we're just gonna fix this little hole in the time-space continuum that was caused by Master Pharaoh 90 being here, and we'll call it good, okay? <laughs> Uh, and why are they always surprised when she does the whole, I'm a princess now kind of thing? It's like, yes, we know this. She's done it before. Why are you all so like, oh, it's the princess. Yes, we know this. <laughs> I can understand you guys being surprised about the whole costume change, but. <laughs> well, it's a different aspect of her personality and her abilities. So think about it as going, uh, Super Saiyan level 2 instead of Super Saiyan level 1. You're already strong, but this isn't even her final form. <laughs> Thank you for fitting that meme in there. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not the other one from that series. <laughs> I do have some restraint. <laughs> I'm not even going to mention it. Uh, so... The animation has been really good in this series overall. The music was really nice. I like the inclusion of the intro song in the final battle when Steely Moon basically first uh, finally wakes up. Mm -hmm. I like the part at the very end after everything's over. We're getting that grace period between 
arcs and they start kindly teasing poor uh, Usagi <laughs> that candidly like, oh, yeah, wow, surprising that you got into the school. Well, if you're desperate, you can do anything. Hey! And then Venus goes, ah, oh, I'm glad I'm going to school with you too, because now I have failed score, buddy. <laughs> we can take the makeup test together. He's like, thank you. Really, guys? <laughs> that was my favorite part in the entire episode. Poor Sailor Moon. Poor Saki. Uh, she's so happy and energetic. Like, yay, we're all going to the same high school together. Well, except for um, Ray. Hey. <laughs> well, she has her own school, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they shoot her down in a very kind, off-the-handed way. <laughs> and apparently... Chippy Moon's going back, so that's nice. But probably not because next arc started. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm going back to the future. Oh, wait. More problems? Damn. Ah, so, your thoughts on the episodes? Plus any uh, differences? <laughs> yes, there were differences. So, um, this chapter was actually the chapter where Super Chippy Moon called Usagi Mama. Because in our last recording, I said that wasn't in the two chapters that I read. So they just went ahead a chapter and pulled that. And they did some trimming. Because in the manga, the scouts go to the Outer Scouts' apartments and try to find them. To see if they're still there, even though they said they were leaving and all that stuff about leaving and raising Hotaru in the mirror. That was all the same. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. That mirror thing is a good way to keep the items separate, if you think about it. So not only was it a gift, it's a good way to keep those three items from resonating again, because, hey, we're going somewhere far away or close by. Giving that to Chibi Moon is a good way to keep that item separate from the other two. <laughs> Especially if she took it back to the future with her. Can't get much further away than a different spot in the time-space continuum. So we skipped the part where... The Inner Scouts went to the Outer Scouts' apartments, and we see their helicopters flying off. We skipped a whole section uh, with Usagi, Mamoru, and Chibiusa walking to the park. As Chibiusa asks Mamoru for a favor, she wants a piggyback ride, so she <laughs> she's getting carried, and they're going over a whole list of things to make sure she's packed, like... A diary that she got from Izuku Mama, an uh, amulet from Ray Chan, Luna P, who, you know, we haven't seen for a while. <laughs> you know, who even in the manga gets to go, I haven't had much of a part lately, sniff. <laughs> and nice bit of an upgrade on the Eclipse for the Eclipse glasses, because in the manga, you know, a little dated, it's been out over 20 years, uh, they got pencil boards instead. Oh, yeah, those. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about that particular difference. I was like, what did they change here? Yeah, they used to be pencil boards. And they were handed out by the Astronomy Club. Ah. So, uh, just out of curiosity, what date did they give in the manga when she was leaving? It was still April 1st. Okay. I just want to make sure, because I was remembering reading another review of this particular episode, thinking about the date being changed to something to more match what's actually going on right now, because... Something about an actual lunar eclipse is happening on the date they say in this version. So on April 1st of next year, there might be an eclipse. I need to look it up. Well, now I have to look at the letter again and see if I'm wrong. Hmm. And it could have just been you uh, misreading something because I usually skim articles and I find the interesting parts and then read those uh, thoroughly and then move on. Mm -hmm. So you tend to miss a lot of things when you do the Cliff's Notes version. Yeah, the letter in the manga says April 1st, which is a big joke because oh gee she's not actually going home april fools <laughs> also in the anime she says they're gonna come and pick her up so what well she says please come and pick me up so i'm assuming she means when she gets back to the 30th century please be at the spot that she's transported to ah so you've pointed out the differences what were your thoughts on the chapter slash anime and the um changes they've made overall it was good i mean the things they cut out, you know, didn't really add a whole lot. So in the interest of maybe we could finally eventually get the episodes and the chapter numbers back in sync. <laughs> Though we were horribly cheated at the end. No Helios. <laughs> 
it's like you said, I want my unicorn and I want it now. It has wings. It's technically an alicorn. Mm, whatever. Moving on. I want the damn unicorn. Yeah. And I want to know when, if there's an instance prior to Hasbro of alicorn meaning a winged unicorn. Because when I was growing up, alicorn specifically referred to the unicorn's horn. Usually in the books where some bastard was trying to get the unicorn's horn for its magical properties. Ah. So anything else you want to bring up about the episode slash manga? It was nice that they switched the ending credit back to Uranus and Neptune, especially, you know, considering that they get to start a new chapter in their lives with raising Hataro. But I was like, where's my fan service? First you take my unicorn, and then you take my fan service? <laughs> you horrible fiends! <laughs> You take away Ember's fan service. Wait a minute, that came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you really want Ember fan service, just go to any MLP forum. Uh... <laughs> Not this Ember, the other Ember. Yeah, please be specific when saying that. You are discussing Dragon Lord Ember. I hope there is no... No, if I say it, it will exist. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> So it is said, shall, shall it be done? Damn you, internet! <laughs> Toothpick. Toothpicks, really? How can that even be? <sighs> <sighs> so, shall we say our final thoughts and wrap things up for this episode? Yes, because, you know, we're only covering one episode, not two, since this was the finale of the arc. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Boy, I do hope they come back and do that next arc. Uh, and the reason I was uh, seeing if the date had changed and everything, because I remember... Uh, reading about that, not just because of that, but I was thinking if they meant April 1st, maybe April 1st of next year is when the new episode will come out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I don't mind waiting if it means they do a good job. Mm -hmm. And they did an excellent job on this season. And they even started to like fix Luna, Artemis, and the kitty near the end of the season. So. Diana. Diana. Didn't really... You know what I meant. Moving on. Really enjoyed this season, and I really hope there's more. Yes, well, in the meantime, we can finally go pre-order Sailor Moon S from the original series. Hmm. Also, we have Cute High Earth Defense Club Love Love to look forward to. Yes. I can't wait. Uh, neither can I. I watched a two-minute preview. So did I. <laughs> I love how they're talking about... Oh, wait. This... Oh, I don't care. I love how they're talking about time this time. So, because they were talking about food all last season now apparently it's about time <laughs> it wasn't always about food it was often about food mm -hmm. so there's a preview of what we think of what's going on in the cute high earth defense club love love now to end sailor moon ah uh, well i hope you enjoyed our thoughts on sailor moon crystal season three episode 39 thank you for listening if you want to be notified of new episodes please subscribe if you enjoy lux's art you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lex's art? He also has a Patreon page and does take commissions. Please check the link below for commission availability.